Hi, Patrick here with Deer Country Farm and Lawn. Today we're going to talk about the difference between lawn tractors and garden tractors and the different families of tractors that John Deere offers that fits under both of those classifications. So to start at a high level, what's the difference between a lawn tractor and a garden tractor? Um, the way that I've been taught as the, the guiding principle for is it a garden tractor is does the manufacturer offer ground engaging implements for it? Okay, so tillers. Uh, plows, cultivators, okay, um, not lawn rollers, not tow behind carts or or uh, aerators, okay, ground engaging, turning the ground, okay, that's that's the written in stone, that's what makes a garden tractor a garden tractor, is you can garden with it. Over the years, though, as less and less people are gardening, it's gotten a little bit looser, okay, so one of the things I look for when trying to figure out is, is a brand maybe I'm evaluating for trade, is it a garden tractor or is it a lawn tractor, is I look right down here in the wheel, and garden tractors typically use a lug nut to attach the wheel to the axle, okay? Lawn tractors are typically going to use a cap and clip system. Over here, you don't see any, any lug nuts in there. The reason for that is, let's say you were gardening, or let's just say you're pulling something around the house. A garden tractor is capable of much higher torque and heavier duty work, so you got to be sure that those tires and that axle and that wheel can support that work without slipping, okay? So that's one of the other tricks that I look for. Is it a, a lawn tractor or a garden tractor, all right? Now, let's take a look at what John Deere offers in both these groups, starting with lawn tractors, okay? Follow me down here. And we'll start off looking at the 100 series of lawn tractor. Many different models in, in, the, in the families we're going to discuss here, okay, including the E100 series. I have an E170 here, but there's a bunch of different models that fit into it. I'm just talking at a high level, what's an E100? An E100 is the models that you'll see uh, box stores like Home Depot and Lowe's sell. Your John Deere dealerships also sell them and stock them, okay, in most cases. Um, we, we do not because of the price gap to an S240, but a lot of dealerships do, and we can order them in. It's not a problem. Um, right out of the gates, just be aware that all the lawn and garden tractors we're going to talk about today are made in the USA by John Deere, okay, including the 100 series. That's a, a big myth that's out there on the internet. We hear a lot. These are made in Greenville, Tennessee by John Deere employees, okay? Now, they are made in a different factory than some of the other families we're going to talk about, and the reason is they don't really share any components, okay? Um, it's a very different machine. It is less expensive and uses less expensive parts. OK, so one of the easiest ways I, I use as an illustration is something as basic as the front axle here. If you can see down here, see my fingers sticking through the axle there. It's a hollow axle. Not a big deal. The reason I'm using it is just for illustration purposes. A lot of the other components are difficult to see because they're internal. They're also going to use a less expensive Briggs and Stratton engine here in the E100 series. Again, not a problem. It's all about spending the right money for the right machine for your yard that meets your expectations. If you've got five acres and you want a machine that's going to last you 20 years, this isn't it, okay? But if you've got a half of an acre and it's relatively flat and you want something that's going to last you 15 years, this might might get you there, okay? Point of the story is, though, is that it's less expensive for a reason. It uses less expensive components. It is not as durable as some of the other models we're going to talk about, all right? Next lawn tractor in the family is going to be the 200 series, S240. There's only one model in this family. It's made with a 42 and a 48 inch deck. So, difference between this and a 100 series. This is going to have a Kawasaki FS series engine in it. Much better engine than the Briggs and Stratton's that we use in the 100 series. Okay? Also has a better seat and a slightly better transmission. Okay? I don't try to over exaggerate those because the transmission is only a little bit better than some of these and the seat's a matter of preference. The engine is a lot better. That's one of the reasons that it has a better warranty. The 100 series, you're going to get a two-year, 120-hour, whichever comes first, bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty. The 200 series, you're going to get three years, 200 hours, again, bumper-to-bumper, -bumper, okay? Essentially, what they've done here is they've taken the frame and mower deck and chassis from the 100 series, okay? And then what we're going to talk about next in the 300 series, they've taken the engine, the seat, and the transmission and put it over in to that frame, okay? So you're going to see a lot of commonalities with the way the pedals and decks are configured on an S240 and a 100 series, um, but the engine, the transmission, and the seat are different. 
Then you get into the 300 series. This is where John Deere starts making these in a totally different factory. These are up in Wisconsin, Horicon, Wisconsin, okay? And here you're again going to have that FS series Kawasaki engine. Um, we do have a model in this family that uses a high-end Briggs as well, but a majority of them use Kawasaki. You're going to get a four-year, 300-hour warranty, bumper to bumper, whichever comes first. And from front to back, this is a very different machine, okay? Let's start with the, the example I gave you over there of the axle. Take a look at this axle. There's no getting through it, okay? This is a solid axle. And again, not to exaggerate, if you get yourself into a pinch that you're bending or breaking an axle, um, it's going to be a pinch whether it's solid or it's hollow. The reason I show it isn't because it's necessarily relevant. It's because it's easily seen. And what you can easily see is that the wheel spindles here use ball bearings, whereas over on the 100 series, they're using bushings, okay? It's invisible, but plastic bushings do not last as long as greasable ball bearings, okay? Big difference here I usually like to talk to people about is the mower deck. This is going to use an Excel deep deck mower deck. It mows the grass a lot better. At the end of the day, these are lawn mowers. That's what you're using it for a majority of the time, and this does mow the, the grass better. It's deeper, has better airflow, has a wider discharge chute that allows that air to escape and spread the grass more evenly, okay? Also, because it's able to process the grass, you can mow a little bit faster on it. There are some better creature comforts on it, okay? Uses a digital display here that shows you your RPMs, your fuel, uh, your hours, and your voltage, so a little bit more information available to you here on these. The X300 series actually has a heavier duty side of it as well. When you get to the 380 and up, this family has a beefier transmission, larger rear tires, and more horsepower, okay? So, what does that do for you? It gives you better traction, gives you better ride quality. There's no suspension on any of these, okay? So, bigger tires means the tires are taking more of the bounce instead of your back, okay? Bigger tires also mean it gives you better traction if you're climbing a hill or moving snow or, or trying to pull something, more horsepower is going to help you get up those hills or it's going to help you push through the snow or the tall spots of grass. So essentially what you do when you get to the 3D and up is you get higher performance. Okay. We've got four different groups over here in the lawn tractor family. Over on the garden tractor side, we've got two groups, the 500 and 700 series. Why do we have so many more lawn tractors and garden tractors? Because there's a lot more people out there with demand and price point that John Deere can fill a price point from $1,500 all the way up to, to five or $6,000 over here in lawn tractors. And there's a lot of people that buy equipment in that price range. Over here in garden tractors, you're going to start around $6,000 and, and go up above $12,000. The 500 series is the beginning of garden tractors. So options that are here well, not options, features that are here that are not over in lawn tractors. First and foremost, I want to draw your attention to this little orange pedal. This is what's called rear locking differential. And for those of you that, that used to do burnouts and stuff in your muscle cars when you're younger, it's basically posi track, okay? So when you start to sense that one of your rear tires is slipping, you can step on this rear pedal, it locks in that rear axle, and now you have both rear wheels turning at the same time, okay? Helpful, whether you're pushing snow or pulling a cart, um, or tilling, you know, uh, but most people will jump up to this because they've got really steep hills where they're doing some serious snow removal on hillsides, and that extra traction is necessary, okay? It's very nice. Other things you need to be aware of here, uh, more house, horsepower, better transmission, wider tires, and fuel delivery options. You're going to have a choice in the 500 series of carbureted or electronic fuel injection, but up to this point, we're going to be talking strictly gas. Now, when you get up to the 700 series, now we have fuel options available to us. The model I'm sitting here is a 750. This is diesel. We also make these models in two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive uses a hydraulic front end, okay? So you're getting real four-wheel drive here. Um, gas or diesel are options. You also start to have the drive-over mower deck. For those of you that have seen the commercials on TV or other videos or whatnot, this deck is able to be driven over. Mower deck here is going to be shaft drive, which allows for the deck to really tear through taller stuff a lot easier than the other models we've all discussed have been belt drive, okay? Uh, this is what we would consider to be a heavy-duty garden tractor, in other words, okay? Uh, the gas engine options of this are, are fuel-injected and commercial-grade FX series engines. The diesels are going to be three-cylinder EMR diesels, again, commercial-grade. So 
Um, hopefully that helps you understand the different families of tractors that John Deere offers and the difference between a lawn tractor and a garden tractor and what's, what's best for your needs, okay, at a high level. A lot of features and a lot of different models in these families. So if you have questions about specifics, give us a call at Deer Country Farm and Lawn, ask for sales, or visit us at www.deercountry.net. Thank you.